What's up, everybody? It is December 27th, 2022. Okay, yeah, we're getting really close to the new year, but we're not in the new year yet. So here we go, our Tuesday Instagram Live. And I, I'm probably behind the times on how Instagram works or updates that they've had. I didn't realize you could put a title on these videos, so hopefully it actually works. For the first time ever, I put a title up there. It says, no sugar for 30 days. Here's what happened. And that's exactly what we're gonna dive into right now. So I've mentioned this in the Lynchpin Private Facebook group, but for whatever odd reason, and I don't know why, uh, once Thanksgiving came to a close, I just told myself, I'm not gonna have any cheat meals, I'm not gonna have any sugar, no treats, no nothing, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, and just go 30 days and see how that is. First of all, see can I actually go 30 days, because I couldn't tell you the last time that I went that long without a cheat meal, so it was a bit of a, a stretch just for that, and I just wanted to see how it would feel, I don't know, performance, mental acuity, sleep, body composition, all the good stuff, so it was a little bit of an experiment. And Christmas has now come and gone, so I can report the findings of my results. So just for some clarification of the parameters of what I mean when I say no sugar, no treats, no cheat meals, no cookies, no brownies, no cakes, no chips, no crackers, no snacking, no ice cream, no pretzels, no refined sugar, none of that kind of stuff, no liquid calories of any, of any sort. I don't drink alcohol, so that was easy in that regard, and um, that was kind of, you know, just, just easy peasy for me right there. However, I do, you know, with regards to refined sugar, if let's say we had bread at dinner, I would have bread with the dinner, okay, so you can count that as refined sugar or not, but no cheat meals, things like that. If I had a cheeseburger, I would have a cheeseburger, I would have the bun, I just wouldn't have any fries. Oh, I see somebody saying that the screen might be frozen. Is the screen frozen or is it not frozen? Somebody let me know if you can actually still see and hear everything or are we having some sort of an issue? Are we good to go? So far so good? Okay, I see some waves and some bubbles, so I'm going to assume that we are good to go. All right, well let me know if it's frozen for everybody. So that's that's the general parameters. And this was also sparked by, okay, screen's good to go, cool. This was also sparked by things that just pop into my head. For example, a while ago, you know, it was Halloween, and my, my kids love to, you know, get the candy as, as Halloween, you know, as, as they do. And they eat it for a little bit, and it's actually pretty cool without us saying anything. They just kind of lose interest after a while, and it sits in the pantry. And I did a little thought experiment the other day. I pulled out a king-size Kit Kat. A king size Kit Kat, I could probably eat four of them, to be quite honest with you. They're delicious, they have the crispy wafer in there. A uh, king size Kit Kat, even though it's labeled as a king size, it's, it's still a, not a ton of food. I'm not going to be full after I have a king size Kit Kat. The calories in one king size Kit Kat are, is the equivalent of having nine apples. I can't even imagine trying to consume nine apples, but that's what you get with one king size Kit Kat. So point being, staying away from a lot of those refined sugars that I just mentioned of the cookies, the brownies, the cakes, the ice creams, and all that stuff, that has a huge impact on the calories that you are no longer consuming. Even if I am still allowing myself to have, you know, the bread with dinner if we did have bread. So that's so that's that. And during the week, Previous to this 30 days with no sugar, I usually keep my meals pretty tight. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy strict, but I'm more strict than the average bear, I'll tell you that. I eat pretty well, and I eat pretty well most of the time, and that since I have one cheat meal a week, it kind of, that one cheat meal a week was my motivation or incentive to keep those other meals during the week tight, because I knew, however you want to say it, I'm earning some sort of reward. I'm gonna have a cheat meal on Friday night or Saturday night or whatnot, so I'm gonna be good during the week because Friday night or Saturday night is coming and that delicious pint of Ben and I, Jerry's ice cream is coming. And so there was that little reward deal. And so I was, one of the things that I noticed was during the 30 days with no cheat meals, 
I wasn't as strict with my regular meals during the day with regards to quantity or portion or whatnot. I was a bit more lenient and generous when I would serve myself these meals because I didn't have that little reward incentive coming up in a few days on Friday or Saturday. So I was like, I'm not having my cheat meal, so I'm going to have a second helping of meatloaf. And by the way, the first helping of meatloaf was cut with a generous hand. And I'm going to have some more mashed potatoes because you know what? Why not? And so I noticed that that grew to some bit, or I wasn't quite as strict with that. I was definitely a bit more lenient. And what was the result at the end of 30 days of that, having lived that way? I actually lost two pounds, which I found interesting. So even being less strict on my daily meals, but not having the cheat meals, I lost two pounds. And I just, I would not have guessed that. And truth be told, I felt great the entire 30 days and it was actually pretty darn easy. I had it built into my head that it was going to be really hard. It really wasn't that hard to be truthful with you. So now Christmas finally arrives and it's the day that I've been waiting for. I'm going to, this is my reward. I said, I just wanted to make it to Christmas. I'm going to have whatever the heck I want on Christmas, just sugar frenzy. And all of our extended family on Emily's side of the house, you know, came over. We had Christmas at our house. Uh, her parents and sisters marched in with just Tupperware container after Tupperware container of every food that you can, could imagine, every baked good, chocolate covered treat, you name it. We spread them all out over the table and it was just a smorgasbord of just confections. It was unbelievable. And I sampled everything. I, I, I made a heck of a plate. I sampled everything. I did not hold back and you know it was sugar. So it was delicious because it was sugar. But the interesting thing with that as well is it didn't have the payoff that I envisioned in my head. Built it up too much and when it was all said and done, I was like, mm, yeah, don't get me wrong. It was delicious. Cookies are delicious so of course they were still delicious after 30 days right I think those people are just lying that are like oh, I didn't eat sugar for a while now it just it just doesn't taste good anymore ice cream just doesn't taste good liar absolute liar of course it still tastes good so yeah it still tasted good because it was delicious treats but it didn't have that crazy payoff that I thought and and as you would imagine after 30 days of not eating sugar I felt about as bad as you would imagine that I felt. I, I, I felt that heavy, sluggish, and just like, blech, like, and that blech feeling was not worth the satisfaction that I got from the treat. So again, it was just an interesting, an interesting little experiment. And my plan was, once Christmas came and went, to then return to what was business as usual for me that has been working pretty darn well for quite a long period of time, which is one cheat meal a week. But now after the payoff wasn't worth it and it was kind of easy to go the 30 days and I didn't really feel like I missed it, uh, I think I'm just going to stay the course, to be quite honest with you. Now that doesn't mean never eat anything sugary, no cheat meals for the rest of my life. That's not what I mean when I say stay the course. I think I'm just going to not plan a cheat meal each week. That's probably the best way that I can say it. I'm going to do my best to just to eat real food like I've been doing, avoid all that refined sugar and processed crap. However, not be a nutritional weirdo that withdraws from society and doesn't participate in, in regular events. And so what I mean by that is if somebody's birthday does come up and I'm there and a slice of cake is presented to me, well, that will probably be one of the opportunities that I will take to have something tasty. And it doesn't mean I need to gorge myself until I fall into a coma in the corner of the room. But I'm going to, my new plan is I think that life will present ample opportunities to have something tasty without me specifically planning them on some predetermined schedule. I mean, just when I think about, and I think that'll happen at least once a month with no effort whatsoever, just living life. So when I think about that, 
There are five people in my immediate family, two boys, our daughter, and then Emily and myself. So each of us has a birthday. So right there, there's five months out of the 12 months of the year. Something is going to be scheduled that's delicious and sugary. And we haven't even talked about her sisters, other kids, grandparents, extended families, all just the things across. There's no holidays even mentioned in there. So now you, you talk about everybody's birthday of your friends and extended family, and then all the holidays that are going to cross your path. There's going to be something happening every single solitary month, no matter what. And so my new plan is I'm just going to try to eat real food to the best of my ability. I'm human, so I might cave every now and then. whoop de doo but that's not going to be my... I'm not going to say, well, it's Friday night, and because it's Friday night, I'm going to eat this pint of ice cream. And then I'm not going to do it again until next Friday night. I'm going to, I'm going to stay away from that for a bit and just allow life to present things at whatever schedule they present them, and then I will just be a part of life. Doesn't that sound crazy? And so we'll see how that goes. And then finally, I'll wrap it up with this friend of mine who shall remain nameless. And I spoke with him on the phone today and told him that I was going to use him as an example and that he would remain nameless. So I, I don't know, you know, some people would probably know him, not everybody, but some people would probably know him. But he is entrenched in the CrossFit community, in the larger CrossFit community, and is one of the sharpest individuals in the space that I know. He knows all the things, knows what you should do, what you shouldn't do. I mean, he's got the knowledge. And he's, he's in great shape, keeps himself fit the whole nine yards, you know, he's living it. But like all of us, that last 10% can always be a bit better. And he just wasn't a little happy with maybe some body composition changes. And he said, you know what? He's like, I'm doing pretty well, but I'm going to actually do the thing. The thing that we always tell everyone else to do, which is kind of like what I just said. He's like, I'm actually not going to eat sugar for a while. Everything that I just mentioned before. No little snacks, no wandering into the pantry and grabbing a handful of this and figuring, ah, it's just a handful, it's not going to matter. He cut all those things out, you know, just drank water and coffee the whole nine years, ate real food, which is inconvenient, right? Because you need to go grocery shopping and then you need to prepare the food and then there's things to clean up afterwards and it takes time. So it's, it's less convenient largely to eat clean, but he's like, I'm going to actually do the thing. And he did the thing and he's got kids as well. And that means, you know, when it's your son's, you know, you, you make him a little grilled cheese sandwich and he didn't eat the whole grilled cheese, cheese sandwich. He left half of it on the plate or the delicious cheesy crust is left on the plate. It's kids who don't like the crust. Instead of going, ah, it would be a shame for this to go into the trash and you finish the crust on your own because it's so delicious and you wind up doing that a few times a week. He decided not to do that. He would just throw their leftovers into the trash. And lo and behold, he had basically the same experience that I would. Guess what? If you do the thing, the thing actually works and it works really well. And it's not magical. It's not overly complicated. It doesn't involve some supplement being delivered to your house that that's going to change your life. You're just doing the thing. It's the basics. It's the boring fundamentals, the boring fundamentals and those boring little daily habits. Those are the things that, that move the needle because most of your life, this is not supposed to mean, uh, not supposed to come off in any sort of negative fashion, but most of your life. And I mean, my life as well is the mundane. Most of our lives are somewhat repetitive. What you do every day, it's the little things. You do little things every day and you do them over and over and over again. And every now and then something big happens in your life. Big things are cool, but with regards to like your body composition, your physical capacity, what you're eating, those are the small mundane routine things that you do every day. And so if you actually have the discipline and motivation to not chase things in your life and then you do those little things over and over again you do them hundreds of times a month thousands of times a year those actually add up to increased performance to better body composition to whatever it is that you happen to be but it's social media can make you chase the big ones but it's the little ones that add up so so that's that and obviously you need to find something in your life that will make this sustainable right i mean 
uh, somebody could hear what I just said right there and be like, well, that sounds terrible. You've just told me that um, you're not going to have that cheat meal every week. And so now you're going to live this monastic, bland, unsatisfactory life devoid of pleasure. I'm not trying to say that either. That, that doesn't sound like a good way to, to stay on planet Earth. What I'm saying is the thing works. And if you do the thing, it will work and you will reap the benefit. And if you're not happy with your physical fitness, with your body composition or whatever it happens to be, it's probably not some teeny tiny little nuanced thing. It's those basics and the fundamentals that aren't being repeated day in and day out because they actually work. There's a reason that they're the cornerstones and the building blocks. So that's it. That's my little 30 days with no sugar recap. And that's it. We're approaching 2023 rapidly. So have a great close to the year and we'll talk again soon.